It's been almost 10 years since the World Boxing Association started letting genetically modified boxers enter the league. Ever since, the views and ratings for the sport have skyrocketed, as many watch new, nearly superhuman fighters battle each other. Among these is Goliath, an undefeated champion who is currently the highest paid boxer in sports. He has had 49 wins and zero losses, with a record breaking 100% knockout rate. Every single fight he's ever been in resulted in a knockout, and in his last fight, his opponent actually died. Now, after six months of no opponents, it seems that everyone is too scared to fight Goliath, which may force him into early retirement. We're here with Goliath now to get his personal opinion. How do you feel, Goliath? Early retirement is not an option. When I started in this sport, I had a simple goal, a perfect record of 50 to zero. 50 wins, 50 knockouts, and zero losses. I refuse to stop at 49. So let this be a challenge to everyone out there. If anyone is brave enough to come fight me and win, the prize is $20 million. Within 48 hours after the video aired, Goliath got a challenge. We're here with a challenger who goes by only David. Hello, David. Hey, thanks for having me. So, David, you've shocked the world today by challenging the undefeated champion, Goliath. According to your profile, you're only 5 feet 5 inches tall, 120 pounds, and have never been in a professional boxing match. Goliath's last opponent was twice your size, and not only did he get knocked out, he ended up dying from his injuries. Are you really ready to risk your life for $20 million? You know, for me, this isn't about the money. It's about the principle. When I was growing up, I looked up to authentic sports heroes. They were people who didn't rely on genetic modification or steroids. It was all about using your natural talent and strength to overcome the odds. Cheaters like Goliath are ruining the integrity of the sport. I want to remind the world that anyone can be a hero, and that's a cause worth dying for. Shortly after the interview, almost out of nowhere, a multi-million dollar company came forward to give David support, Chipotle. And it all started with a Twitter post. The tweet was seen by Chipotle's over 650,000 Twitter followers, and soon David's story went viral. When I say boom, you mean boom. boom. <laughs> yeah. And we were like, what's happening? Okay, first of all, people are putting up their own videos. Yeah. I think like, we actually have a tape. Can we roll the tape of that? When people started putting videos around the world. Millions of users from Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and more posted content with the hashtag BeatTheGiant, listing times when they had to overcome a big obstacle. It's, it's the perfect kind of case study, I think, for you know, athletes and non-athletes to look at as a way to overcome challenges, you know? Yeah, definitely. Soon after, Chipotle made another big move. They released a new limited-time Goliath-sized burrito, and the Goliath challenge was born challenging customers to eat the entire burrito in one sitting. I've got 30 minutes to do it. 85 people have tried. Winners of the challenge were entered into a sweepstakes, with prizes ranging from Chipotle gift cards to front row seats to the David vs. Goliath match. With the fight only a month away, the internet was going crazy for David and for Chipotle. Chipotle's Twitter followers more than doubled, going from 650,000 to 1.8 million in just a few weeks. Tickets to the fight sold out with the last few going for almost $3,000 a piece. Social media was exploding with content as the hashtags Beat the Giant and Goliath Challenge continued to rise in popularity. By the time the fight happened, the media was calling it the most highly anticipated fight of all time. Then, on one eventful summer night, the wait was over. For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, uh, let's get ready to rumble! The fight was proceeding as planned when something unexpected happened. Goliath collapsed during the second round. He was rushed to hospital where it was discovered that he had suffered a heart attack due to the overuse of performance enhancing drugs. He's receiving medical attention as we speak. Uh, they are performing CPR. Um, and again, uh, this is not, it is not part of tonight's entertainment. Um, uh, this has happened. By default, due to being healthy and able to fight, David won the match and beat the giant. The 
physicians informed Goliath that his heart health had become so poor that he could never fight again, which forced him into early retirement. These, hopefully this is a wake up call to some of these dudes. Maybe they can back away off some of this stuff and really take a look at their life and realize how precious life is. As for David, he went on to become an activist against genetic modification and steroids to promote the importance of caring for your health as well as playing the sport you love. The World Boxing Association soon ruled that the sport would return to its roots and only natural and modified fighters were able to compete. Chipotle saw this as an opportunity to remind the world that unnatural methods are unsustainable and that being natural is the only way to go. Chipotle has made its title as being the first ever national restaurant to cook food serving only non-GMO ingredients. Their aim is to cultivate a better world by serving healthy, affordable food made from the freshest ingredients with respect for the animals, farmers, and the environment. But now, it was about more than just food. Chipotle started the Homegrown Player campaign to help support talented, natural players in all kinds of sports. John Kempit, the first ever Chipotle Homegrown Player MVP. He will treasure that one. I think Chipotle is, is really showing that there's a better way. Um, in the end, companies, associations, and people from all walks of life came together and helped cultivate a better world.